In honor of the Oakville shop teacher. Yeah, we I probably should have mentioned. I don't know if we're going to be doing this whole shop teacher thing. I had a pretty extensive conversation that on a good buddy of mine's podcast, Joe Rogan from the Joe Rogan Experience. So oh, oh, right. Probably right, want to yeah. pop those off. The topic I mean, has been shredded. It was. The information has been distributed. It Millions took me of people like heard it. an hour to put this on. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh my god! What? Uh, I was what? Just, uh, I don't know if you would get it. Sort of like an inside you, joke. Wait, 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 wait! I like Joe you. posted your buddy on the Joe. internet. Joe Rogan from the oh, Joe Rogan Experience. Right. That's funny stuff. He does a podcast in uh, Austin. Yeah. Spotify. Yeah. You should honestly appear on that. It's a yeah, yeah, pretty I've, like good career move. I don't I'd know like, if you I'd have a guy to. that could get you on there or whatever. But yeah. anyways, probably gonna want to pop those off. I don't know if uh, yeah, it's hard to get. It's really tight around the neck. Does area. sort of look like it's giving you a yeah. weird naked chokehold. I don't yeah. think it's like a UFC move. Yeah. yeah I've been yeah, sort yeah. of following UFC. A buddy of mine. Come to think of it, is actually a commentator in the league. He's like a in, uh, UFC commentator. Joe, Joe Rogan the, is it Joe, Joe Rogan? Rogan experience? Yeah, oh, right. you actually know him. Yeah. 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 Speaking of him, it kind of reminds me of this pretty crazy story. But I was one time, so I was in Austin at his studio, right? Yeah. And I was uh, doing his podcast a couple of days ago, actually. And talking about Joe Rogan reminded you about Joe Rogan. You know. You're a little aggravated ever since I did the Joe Rogan experience. I don't know what has gotten into you, but I would suggest you might need a little puff puff. I actually have a buddy of mine who's pretty into that sort of stuff. And we can Let me make, guess, Joe you. Rogan. Seth Rogan. You want to motorboat these things or what? The boys. The boys cast. The lads. The boys cast. The dudes. Prepare yourself for boys cast. The bros. The boys cast. The homies. The boys cast. Listen, we have a lot to talk about, but I'm not a happy camper right now because I don't know if you heard the news, but Don Lemon. Don Lemon. He's out here, and they ask, he's talking about all these politicians, and he says that a 51 year old woman, Nikki Haley, isn't in her prime Ooh, anymore. Look, if you got a heartbeat and you're a woman, you're in your prime to me. No woman is ever out of her prime. No person's illegal. No woman's out of her prime. Yeah, you know what your prime is as a woman? Under 200, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. I go, You know what I do? I walk by old age homes. I take a, I walk by, I have a boner, first of all. Yeah. So I got to get rid of the boner. And then when I walk by, I say, Primo. Yeah, I hoot and holler. I, I hoot, I holler, I say, like a, a Primo. Like an 80s construction worker caricature. I'm just fucking. I whistle at them. Yeah, you do. I That's, don't even want to. I not calling those old bags. When know? I go to strip clubs, I go to this. My buddy goes, hey, we're going to the Rippers. I go, it better be the Rippers with girls in their prime. And he goes, what do you mean by that? I go, 50 to 60. Yeah, prime. Prime. Yeah, I know. I mean, women are like a fine wine. You know what? Any woman... I'll tell you what numbers are in your prime. Any prime number. Yes. But then also any even number as well. Just all of them. Every, any number. Any prime number, any non-prime number. You're all tens to us, ladies. If you're an Olympian and you're a woman right now and you're 75 years old and you think, I can't win the javelin toss, I'm 75. Not only can you win the javelin toss, you're going to get every endorsement. You're going to be the sexiest woman to ever do the javelin toss. I mean, there's only two things holding you back, your brain and Don Lemon. Don Lemon has been, literally, I, I don't even want to think about how many elderly women were about to join the Olympics. Then they said, they got Don Lemon legitimately gatekeeping. There's oh, a gate there. Sick. He's there. You know Sickening. what I mean? Not only, because he's looking, he goes, look at you, you're too old, and you don't even have a dick, you know? Oh, gross. I think it's just all those women who were just watching Don Lemon's morning show, too, and just for a little, just some excitement in the morning, and you just get disrespected. You get disrespected like Don that. Lemon on CNN, of all places? Don Lemon's walking out of the bathhouse, you know what I mean? He's satisfied. I mean, I'm remiss. Ruin your day. I'm remiss to call CNN this, but I have to say, I think they're fake news. Yeah. That kind of stuff makes me think yeah. CNN is fake news. I've never been one to say that before. No. And I'm you you are right, and yeah. there's a lot that would take that's, me to ever get me on board with calling them fake news. But that's but what, fake news. That's I mean, fake news. I'll tell you what, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, he's apologized. Doesn't matter. I, yeah, you, Some okay. things you can't apologize for. It doesn't matter. Some things yeah. you can't take back. <laughs> you can't. No. You, you want to look at me and you go, a nine-year-old woman's not in her prime? What the f Disgusting, You go, Don oh, I'm Lemon. sorry I said that. Sorry, I'm get, 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 get out of here. You think as someone who's been through everything Don Lamont has been through, that he would be kind of He has been through a lot, man. He's probably, you know, had a scenario where he was, you know, tag team and two guys, and then one guy got tired, then he had to deal with only having one guy that night. And all the, he fell for the Juicy Smollett thing. He fell for the Jesse Smollett thing. Well, I'll tell you what, he's, he's fallen for every lie in the book at this yeah, point. Yeah, he's been compromised. 
Yeah, so you, the, oh, that's the big lie that women over sixty are not in their that prime. That is the big lie. They want that to talk the about lie. the Donald Trump's big lie. The big lie is that any woman ever is not in her prime. You're on your deathbed as long as you're breathing. You know what? You're breathing you're primo prime. air because you're, you're a fucking Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime. How old is primo. Optimus Prime? Whatever age. Yeah, exactly is prime. right. Whatever age. Is How prime. old is that metal? 80, 90 years old. Yep. It's a heap of metal. That's an old set of metal. Yeah. So when Optimus Prime is 80 years old and he's still kicking ass, you're going to say, oh, he's Optimus Prime. I will not tell you that to stop that steal. No. So anyways, Don Lemon, if you're listening, don't subscribe to Patreon. Yeah, you're you're uh, invite for the show. Canceled, pal. Not interesting. So other than the fact that Don Lemon... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of bits on this podcast. A lot of bits. Okay, I mean, so wait, we were doing a bit. I was really <laughs> legitimately angry. <laughs> I wasn't happy, Camper either. Well, nerve of that guy. But I will say, so I probably before we get too into it, we wanted to mention it. Probably it was like I had maybe the wildest like twenty four hours of my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The first part was so before even doing the Rogan thing, mm. I basically hung out with Roseanne for seventy two hours <laughs> randomly. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking weird. I was like, why is she sitting beside you on your flight? She just happened to have the seat beside you? Dude, so the night before, so I did Roseanne's podcast, and her son's like a fan, right? So basically, I did her podcast like a year ago, so we're like kind of internet friends or whatever, right? And then she was like, oh, I'm coming to the cellar. I'd love to come see your show. And it was like a show that like I was on, Schultz was on, and some other people, right? And she was like, okay. I'd love to come see that. And she was like, "Can you?" at one point, they literally go, she was like, can you get me in? She was like, so did I just mention your name at the door? And I was like, yeah, or probably just show them your face. Yeah, yeah, be like, I'm Roseanne. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yo, know, they, they were. She was literally like, you know, we'll be fine. Like, is it? Is it she doesn't do spots or anything. Well, no, she would, but she just she doesn't really do the seller. She was like, they're like L.A. people, I guess. Right. So she's more of like a comedy store person. But it was so funny. They were like, hey, yo, can you like, can I mention your name? And I was like, <laughs> man, like. Yo, I'm pretty sure that all you have to do is be like, hey, I'm Roseanne. That literally reminds me of the story of, uh, there's like this famous story of Tiger Woods when he was really popping off and he was hanging out with Michael Jordan and somebody else, I think Derek Jeter. And he's okay. just like, he's like, oh, like, I just, I don't know how to like talk to women. What do I say? And they're like, tell them you're Tiger Woods. <laughs> Also, that turned out to be a hoax that Tiger Woods doesn't know how to talk to women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. That Tiger Woods is more so when he goes, I don't know how to talk to women. And Jordan, Michael Jordan's like, hey, your wife's not here, bro. Yeah, yeah. No, this was like 20-year-old Tiger Woods where he legitimately was like, oh, shucks. Well, it worked too good. That advice worked yeah, too yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes, I'm Tiger Woods. And she goes, all right, you want to fuck? He goes, god damn. God damn. It's kind of working a little too easy. Yeah that, yeah, that one worked too good. So, and then basically the next day, I was taking this flight to Austin. And then she, she and by the way, she was like super fun. She was like blitzed, like hilarious. Yeah. She like uh, got like too trash and like took a nap on the bench at the comedy cellar. Like she's <laughs> yeah, rocking yeah. out, right? <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then I get in my uh, seat at the, their plane was delayed. And then I get in the plane and then I'm right beside her. So the two of us just like chatting. She was telling me all these stories, like pretty cool stuff. Like she was saying when Norm MacDonald was, uh, like when she did the show, like Norm Macdonald was one of the original writers. Yeah. And then when it got back together, she he was like the first person she called. And then when it all like came apart, she like he quit too, and he was like, "I won't do it if you're not gonna do it." Yeah. Like oh really? Like he was yeah. all he was involved on, on like the Connors. Yeah, he was gonna be one of the writers on it, and he said one of the biggest things that I felt like related to kind of stuff we talk about was she was like in that writing room. It was like she a lot of times that was the era when every sitcom was doing all of the like really serious episodes like yeah, they she was saying have, like, she was Dan, like Dan had a heart attack very like yeah either the crying like you can like the scenes everyone remembers from like Family Matters are like Will Smith where he was like bawling yeah, his eyes yeah. out you know what I mean yeah. and she was like whenever those scripts came in we were like a few of us would always be like oh someone's trying to go for the Emmy she goes oh I smell an Emmy on this script <laughs> like whenever it was she goes whenever it was the big long like monologues sure. or the, with the like long punch-ins or whenever someone started wanting to cry we could always tell someone's looking for an Emmy for the writing <laughs> Isn't that, that funny? That is funny, yeah. Yeah, so she was like, we could always tell. And then another one, she was like, to just show how f phony Hollywood was. I guess one Wait, of the Hollywood's phony? <laughs> yeah, she, that was one of the things she doesn't, like, right she doesn't like Hollywood right now. 
But she says, so one of the things was Wanda Sykes was apparently going to be a writer on the show and then it like didn't work out and that was the person who like kind of broke the like story basically. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... And it was like, she was like a, essentially like a disgruntled employee kind of, which I didn't really Was it going to be a writer on she the was. new show? No, yeah, she was. Seems like. She wrote for like a season or oh, some okay. of it and didn't work out. Yeah. And then she was like, at the time I was arguing that we should have like a black grandkid and she was like, yeah, because we had like, I was the first person to like have uh first like woman showrunner or whatever yeah, yeah. it was. I was the first like person to have like a first gay, ca gay yeah. cast member and she was like we're trying on the new one she was like I want to have a black grandson so she's like and they were fighting her on and she goes so behind the scenes they were like fighting her on like having a black granddaughter or whatever it was and then and then got on publicly saying she's like racist and losing her <laughs> show and she was like well they were she was they like her dirty. yeah she just had all these like cool stories but I don't think any of that stuff she would like care about yeah and then I went basically that night after the thing we went and like hung out at like the Vulcan with like her and like all the like fucking Tony nice. Hinchcliffe squad and stuff <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it was a nice. super fun night so there was that she lives in Austin now? she lived like an hour outside of Austin oh. yeah moved there started doing stand up again nice so that was that and then the actual fucking uh Rogan thing. I thought the most. What's the snack situation there? That's what everybody wants to know. Not really a snack situation. What do you honest. mean? Maybe there was a snacks area that I didn't know about. There was no snacks. Not that I know about, but I'll tell you, they do fly. They like so when you do it, like there was like first class flight, like yeah. fancy. They treat it like a proper show. And it's a real that. deal. Yeah, yeah. The real deal synopsis. Yeah. yeah. The guy comes and picks you up in the fancy car. The whole deal, right? Sure. But I'm telling you, I don't know. There was snacks, but there was like a big like stuffed Wolverine in like yeah, the that's studio, yeah, everybody, all that kind everybody of takes the photo of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, oh yeah, I didn't get a photo. Uh, I kind of screwed it up because you. I sort of thought some of that would just be like part of the thing like you'd finish the thing and then they would do the photo but i kind of kind of like wrapped up and i didn't say it and then i got into the car and i told the guy i was like i forgot to take a photo and he was like yeah everyone says that <laughs> so apparently it's pretty common the people just because you see the photos and you just think it's part of the procedure right, right, but it, right those were all requested so like when elon musk gets like his photo of the thing it was that was a request that wasn't like part of a procedure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh you thought it I was maybe just with part, part of the i thought it was just part of the thing yeah it's so like all right now we're gonna get your photo in front of the big giant thing well, that's what they do yeah a lot of times and things right I think they uh they just see that and they go i gotta get a photo with this thing yeah i screwed it up <laughs> all right so sort of what happened was basically last time i was in austin i was sort of hanging out there a bit because everyone is sort of asking how it happened or whatever mm -hmm. which there's sort of two types of people there's people that they go they're like there's certain people that are be like, well, long overdue, like super, you know, a lot of sure. that. And then some people that are like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like some people are mentioned like, what the, f like, I saw you like on the, how the fuck does that happen? And you're like, okay, it's not that crazy. Yeah, isn't that insane? <laughs> you're like, how many degrees of separation do you think we are away yeah, from him? That a lot of Canadian people, like, I guess they've been like sort of falling, but they still don't like get that we're kind of like doing good or whatever. Yeah. I had a lot of people that were just like bewildered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah people are like is this some kind of photoshop <laughs> right are you up to your tricks again <laughs> well and a lot of people posted like i honestly had to do a double take i thought it was a photoshop prank and i'm like it's not that crazy <laughs> yeah, not that. i'm like you probably also know other people who have done it yeah and i have lots of people that are less popular than us that have done the show or whatever comedians right yeah. it's not like yeah so there's some people were like couldn't believe their eyes like it was the craziest <laughs> thing and i was just like yeah you're kind of like yeah, we're like doing pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, you know what I mean. Like they, they're they're dumbfounded. Like they just saw their, you know, the guy that like their janitor is just on joy. Yeah, it's <laughs> like no, it's like they're. Well, I mean, for the Canadians, it's probably like it's their fucking post. Their like mailman was on the Ron James show. <laughs> <laughs> like what? No, you fucking got no Ron James. He goes, kidding me? <laughs> he goes, not that crazy. <laughs> but everyone always told me like the videos. Then I went and hung out in Austin. And then, then he. So if anybody's up. listening and they want to get on Joe Rogan, just go to Austin. Go to Austin. Hang <laughs> out. Well, he liked hang the videos. Just barbecue <laughs> joints, coffee shops. You're yeah, going to want to yeah. ideally find out where he lives. Yeah. And then when he leaves, start from there. <laughs> have a decent tail. Like you don't yeah. want to be too close. You don't want to get spotted. He's on the lookout for that kind of stuff. And then just, you know. You know, I mean, have some Accidentally camel like trip. <laughs> Have a bow. Sure. <laughs> you know, just, you know. Oh, you like drop you're your to, bow? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I have that same bow. Crazy. I dropped my bow. Oh Hi, my I'm also a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I just dropped my bow. Also, I'm a comedian. No, you do. I'm also a comedian. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Joe Rogan, I'm also a comedian. That's my bow. What kind of bow do you have? <laughs> Compound bow? Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> 
But the I, the part that I thought that the boys guys people would like is that one of the things that I sort of sparked it, I feel like the most was Kurt went on there and then he was talking about White Claws and he was like, Ryan Long was the one who got me to drink White Claws. And he was like, that's hilarious. And after that, he, that, after that night, he went like brought me up again. Then he added me on Instagram oh. and then he messaged me and he was like, want to come to a podcast. So, so it was the White Claws. But I, the, I, honest to God, I said that to Kurt. I'm like pretty sure the White Claws were a big part of why <laughs> I was on there. And I'm not- Someone's taking notes at home being like, all right, that's a little too tif- difficult for me to understand. Yeah, well, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But isn't that crazy? Because how much people, like, the shit, the amount of shit that I get from being a white claw, man. Yeah. I mean, dude, when we moved to the America. The best career that was, move that was, I've ever had. That was literally the, <laughs> the maximum freedom. We moved we, to America, and we were like, um, we were. Like, have you had a white claw yet? We 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 moved here and then and then ev- uh, immediately everyone started being like white claw oh, you got you holding your girlfriend's drink <laughs> yeah. like well, overnight they go yes I am but this white claw is mine yeah but anyways I'm pretty sure that white claw got right, me well. to appear on my buddy Joe Rogan's all right well white claw <laughs> if you're listening uh, we'll send you the uh, studio address if you want to send some samples ah uh-huh. so those were sort of a couple notable things nice. I think the best notable thing on Can't my part snacks, was probably. Yeah, I mean, they might have had snacks Probably in the kitchen, but I wasn't about to start just like poking around. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like he comes in and just like dicking around in their kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't about to start poking around like that. Yeah. But the thing was, so probably the most thing that I was like stressed out about was that I was going to pee because I've never made it through. One I was of these. surprised. Ah, uh-huh, right. So was, did you want to know what I, my secret was? Well, Which I think that I don't have necessarily as much of a bladder thing. I just drink a lot because. So Ari, I was talking to him about it, and he was like. Oh, it's not a big deal. I'm like, well, yeah, for him, he's like, I'll just pee in a cup in the thing. And yeah, like, sure. I'll just like, piss on the, whip your dick out and piss <laughs> on the table and be like, you like that, Joe? Well, yeah, he's like the wack. He yeah. pulls off these like wacky moves because they've known each other. Joe forever, Rogan, right? though, he does, he goes and pees a lot. Well, I was like, I can pee once, but if you pee twice, yeah. I've, here's the thing. I feel like That's the first time you pee, it's now. no problem. The second time you pee, it's probably just like, you know what? Let's just wrap it up. Right. And if I, if I peed after like an hour and then peed after like, at the two hour mark, if I really had to go, it'd be like, whenever I pee, that's the end of that's this. That's the end of it. Yeah, so yeah. that was what I was sort of, so what I did was, and he actually gave me this idea when I was Diaper. talking. To him. No, no, no. I didn't drink anything. So I legitimately worked out the night before uh-huh. and then I didn't drink any water and went to sleep like super parched. <laughs> <laughs> Just you and Joe Rogan be like, I was, yeah. I was, I took, I didn't, and I woke up in the morning and I, I had, like, the only thing I had was an espresso yeah. and maybe a tiny sip of water. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. So I didn't try a sip of water. Yeah. And then, uh, and, and then I was, because yes, my mouth was extremely dry. It was yeah. very like, uncomfortable. So I would just had tiny little bits of water and then I didn't even just have to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember at some point, uh, Jamie went, uh, took a piss and I was like, yo, I'm fucking doing it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, haven't, I don't even have to go. Yeah, you don't have to go. So there you go. For people out there with, uh, you don't have a weak bladder, uh-huh. you just drink too much. I just drink too much. I've been thinking I have a weak bladder, and I'm like, I'm just actually probably drink a healthy amount of water. Yeah. You rarely have to go pee during this podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a few times. Three hours, though. That's was, Three and a half hours. There is a, there is a point where, like, near the end, too, where there's a few things where I'd be like, yeah, and then this and this and this, and he'd be like, "What do you mean by that?" And I'd be like, "Nothing, <laughs> <laughs> nothing." I take it back. Yeah, I take it back. Can we edit this out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you edit that out. I'll, and the last thing that I thought was interesting that yeah, I think I talked to you about, but at the beginning he was like, "Do you want to like, do you want to smoke weed?" And I was just like, "No." And he was like, "Oh, come on, pussy." And I was just like, "There's like one percent of me that was like, do this," and the other thing was like don't be no. an idiot. I was like, right. dude, like you're not a weed smoker. I, that'd be the craziest thing in the world for me to be like, let me just go imagine. Cause like you have to be, you have to be like crazy famous to be like on something where you're like, the bit is you're like, oh, I'm yeah, so, I'm so, high. Fucking, I'm so high. And you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, like, can you imagine just do that? And you just sat yeah. there. <laughs> thinking, you're like every 10 minutes, you're like, oh, dude, I'm freaking stand, dude. <laughs> what is that indica (laughs) shit dude yeah 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 yeah. i just like sit there and he's like he's like something about the videos and he's like i'm just like dude what what is anything (laughs) what he's like what is comedy is anything anything, is anything anything anything? like what is this mic even like (laughs) i go what is this yeah you 
You don't want to smoke weed. All the, the I smoked weed maybe three weeks ago, and I was at a comedy club, and I like immediately had to go home. Yeah, you know, not even on like being weird. It just made me crazy tired. Right, it's yeah, got like yeah. super tired. And yeah, just, like, you don't. Know, yeah, that's unless you're like you need to be like a pretty regular weed smoker. It's got to be in your repertoire. If it's like have a couple of drinks, that would have been fine. For sure, me. but it's like yeah, that specifically, I was just like that. It would literally just ruin your life. Because you do, you talk for three and a half hours, and then you do sort of leave, and then it kind of wraps up really quick, and you're like, okay, see, and then you're in the cabin, and you're just like, what did I say? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You're just like, what did I just do? Yeah. <laughs> of, the only thing is I did know that I was like, okay, I know I like sort of made him laugh, and that was, like, yeah, I was happy about it. That's, that's kind of what you want. Okay, so. All anyways. right. Well, congrats. Congrats. <laughs> it's fun time. Fun, fun listen. Like the, <laughs> like, like the Danny video, too, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. The boys are on the come up. Uh, we are. Uh, the boys are on the come the boys up. Boys are officially on the come up. We have. So me and Danny have been meeting up like once a week to just like deal with podcast stuff for the last yep. little bit, and we're dealing with like all the Discord. We've actually got a cook in, and everyone's posting like articles, and like we have a yep. bunch of different discussion threads. But you can't get in the Discord unless you're a patron. So you have to join the Patreon. If you're not, don't even. You could skip this. Segment. We're filming or Bugman or versus Bugman the week after this one. Danny's yep. going away, and then we're filming Bugman versus Bugman documentary, which is going to be like basically a reality show that's going to be on our Patreon. And uh, so you want to subscribe patreon.com slash the boys cast for Bugman versus Bugman. I will not be defeated. And more importantly, right now, Danny yeah. is no who's a pay pig. Yeah, I am a pay pig. It's my it's literally my Twitter profile photo. <laughs> you actually are the closest thing to a pay pig, though. I think so. I mean it's my <laughs> that's what I went for at, for Halloween yeah, this year. I, I went as a pay pig. Yeah. Which was the easiest costume, by the way. Yeah, definitely. My girlfriend just dressed like a prostitute and then I just wrote yeah, pay yeah, pig yeah, on my yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was all right on that front. Yeah. But there's basically Vice has this article, and so there's these guys on the internet, and their whole thing is like there's there's always these articles about this woman. Like there's one, there's another one. It's like I'm a 70 year old woman, and I just get these guys that come over and then clean my house, and then they pay me to do it. Yeah, like there's a lot of like guys that have this fetish. But the funny, there's one on the internet where they basically meet girls, and the girls just go send me money, and the guy goes oh, yeah 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 that's yeah, a good, yeah. well that's, that's a they good get off you, on like, the humiliation of the, some sort of like cash apping you but money. financial domination is a scamming problem <laughs> and it turns, so it turns out that a lot of times the people that are sending money so you basically you're like talking to this chick and you just send her a thousand dollars and you like it's one that's thing. not the scam like when the, the funny part is like because this is written by vice like when a chick goes send me a thousand dollars you piece of shit yeah that's yeah, not yeah, the yeah, scam yeah, 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 yeah. that's not the scam part because you'd be like oh is that's that the work. scam that's yeah. a real job <laughs> that woman is putting on her fucking hard hat she's clocking in and working a just a real honest job <laughs> you're bang on that's the funny part <laughs> That's not a scam. So Vice is like, hey, there's these women that are making an honest living by finding men on the internet and getting them to send them money for nothing. Yes. And for literally some, nothing. And she goes, then there's these dudes that are taking advantage of that. Yeah, because it turns out that it's like the easiest thing to catfish. <laughs> Maybe the on. easiest gig ever, right? Yeah, and the one girl is mad. She was like, and some guys are suspicious now that I only have six followers. <laughs> yeah. You're like, but then I can't get more followers unless I get more guys. It's kind of a chicken in the egg scenario. <laughs> it's so crazy. She goes, there's lots of easy money to be made, says a fraudster who's already conned five thousand dollars out of being a <laughs> one pay pig. Dude, it's <laughs> Also, if you never find out, I guess no harm, no foul. That's right? what I'm saying. If you <laughs> What's think, the difference? If you're a pay pig and you think you're talking to a real woman and you're you're getting off. Really, what's the, What's the difference? What is the difference? It's not like you were meant to meet this person at some point, and then that's where you're like, oh, it all falls apart here. Like the whole point is you never meet. I mean, it is insane, like to know that, like you're when you're talking to OnlyFans chicks, you're talking to like a dude in India sitting there with like nine computers. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, do you want me to see your bobs? <laughs> you go, wait a second, wait, 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 wrong guy. Hey, I can show you my boot. I can show you my bobs for ten dollars. <laughs> you go, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's tough out there for ladies, you know, yeah, so, this economy. So basically, they go, there's a massive influx of new people trying to find their footing in the scene. What does that even mean, though, your footing in the scene? Like, you set up a, you essentially set up a profile that's like, send me money. Yeah. That's how you get, your footing you have to, in the scene. Yeah, I guess you have to know all the ways, because every chick is just like, just send me money. But I guess you have to know all the ins and outs of pay piggery. 
You have to you have, you have to know the the what the guys want, I guess. I guess there's an art to it of being a really good fin dog. <laughs> I don't think like, there it's is not an just art. like, hey, send me a grand, you loser. I think that it's I, honest to God think it is sort of that though. You think it's just and but then how do like guys How are these guys all scamming them so easily then? I guess. Well they I mean again, men are better at art generally. Mm-hmm. So you might think the scammers in a scene where the vast majority of those being sent money are female would also be mostly women. But according to Scarlett, this is not the case. And it's funny because I'm like, I actually don't think that. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's like, I'm sure you imagine that all the girls are, that it's the girls doing the scamming. And I was like, no, it's dudes like having that. I mean, that girls kind of, do girl scamming, which they're is doing they the invented Findom. They, the girls like are they're, doing the original scam. Like they invented this. Yeah. Props to them. But then guys come in and you go, we can do this a little better. Yes, and because you, you go, you're not doing anything. You're, you're just a photo. And it'd be like, hey, how about I just use your photo? <laughs> how about I use your photo, but it'll replace my cash app tag? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some oldest trick in the book. <laughs> the old cash app. I love that a guy who got uh, who got scammed became a scammer, too. That's the best. <laughs> That's the perfect full circle. Yeah, he guy, was like, wait a second. This guy says, according to Joey, a former pay pig who turned his hand to catfishing <laughs> after being scammed himself. He probably got scammed. He goes, holy shit. It was so easy to scam me. Why aren't I scamming other Yo, men like this? I know, right? What do you think like the annual... like? The annual dollar figure of all fin doming is in like the world. Like you think it's like a like hundred. Is million? it a billion dollar? Industry? Is it a billion? Yeah. Is is fin doming a billion dollar industry? Mm. I would say no, but I, I think it's hundred million. There. Yeah, yeah, I do. Think are fin doms are well, pay pigs paying? You know, out here's the thing. Mil? It, it, there's a fine line between pay pig and relationship. Yeah. And a lot of, <laughs> no, I'm talking about specifically internet with, pay pig, yeah. where you never meet. The internet girl. never meet. Yeah. Well, how many guys would send money to OnlyFans girls? Like, does that count? You're like, you're definitely dabbling in being a baby. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Like, think about how many guys, like, even think of like Karen Fee and how many guys just like send her money. Uh, yeah, that 100 is, bucks that like, is all the time. Stuff. Like, but I think part of so it too maybe is it is the, a billion. There's like an element of that where they're like, you're sending more money than you're like comfortable with because there's like a bit of a thrill there. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh I, oh, I can't pay my electricity bill this I, month. Oh. Yeah. It also is, feels like the real thing. You're like, oh, they're making me waste money that I don't have. It's almost like she's my girlfriend. <laughs> Wait, that, that's, I the, that's the girlfriend. Thing, not the girlfriend experience. <laughs> that's the real girlfriend experience. <laughs> that's the that's the true uh, girlfriend experience. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, I really can't afford this trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she goes, uh, she claims the perps are typically men who are jealous of the women. <laughs> That's my, that was one of my favorite things, too. She's like, the reason that the men are doing this scam is because they're jealous I of the I also love the nerve of a woman to call them perps. <laughs> Fuck off. You're perps. You're all perps. You are a perp. You are also a perp. You 100% have some you. nerve to call them <laughs> the like, perps. We're honest. We're just honest workers, and they're perps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're, what's, you go, what's the difference? Like, well, I'm scamming this guy out of like a hundred grand a year, <laughs> but I'm a girl. But they're my photos. But they're my so photos, yeah. They're, and, and they're doctored photos. So of course. They're almost Heavily my doctored. photos. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, so she, that's that's the funniest part, that she's calling everyone else as a perp and not her. But also funny <laughs> is that she says, these guys that are scamming the people, it's not because they think it's a good scam and they want to make money. It's because they're jealous. <laughs> they go. I mean, it's literally mm. one of the greatest scams on. Yeah, Earth. but I guess you go. They're not jealous of like they're yeah. They're I guess everyone's jealous of making money. Yeah, of like the ease at which you just scam men out of money. Y'all jealous? Y'all jealous? Like <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have a good scam, and they no, have no, no. A, they have a better scam. Yeah, they have a better scam. They don't have to show their bodies. They don't have to show. They 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 invented a better scam than yours. For sure. Yeah, they made the better mousetrap. Even seasoned pay pigs. <laughs> pay pigs is so funny. <laughs> Even seasoned pay pigs will submit to catfishing sometimes in a moment of weakness. This happened to Mark. He's a seasoned pay pig. I've been pay pigging when you were in, when you were in the stroller, buddy. You think this is my first pay pig I've been rodeo? Pay pigging since you were in short pants. You think this is my first pig rodeo? <laughs> this is so crazy. How do you find pay pigs for your article? I, it is. I think they probably do other pay pig articles, and they go, "If you're a pay pig, like, yeah, yeah. Kind of like they probably have like a pretty good like." 
kind of CRM spreadsheet stuff. So they just search pay pig. They find all the pay pigs they've ever. Interviewed. That's true. Like, They're just like we've interviewed a hundred pay pigs. Yeah, this happened to Mark, a tech worker from London in his late twenties. Late twenty seems too young to be pay pig. Yeah, that's like fifty. And I guess, but once you have too much money, then the pay pigging like doesn't work. You have to probably lose so much money to get yeah, your yeah, you and, get you're your like, ju- and then people juice. start yeah, you probably have to. You know, so he's what uh, Dom's referred to as a whale. <laughs> they call it, they call the big pig a whale. Like, how do you become like? Is there some sort of trauma that causes you to be a pay? Like your dad, like be you with like a sack full of coins? It has to be something. Kinda, yeah, and then you go like, I'm a pay pig. I, like, I think so, it might have been like, like you get financially like you need that domination because you got beat with. Or it's your ex. You know, you had some ex girlfriend, the one that got away that used to spend all your money, sort of situation. And you just miss her. The big spender. They dream of dominating. <laughs> that's that's what they call the whale. Like that's the their one that got away for the you know the uh, the what are they the fin the fin doms fin doms yeah. They all have like one guy that like fuck, one day. You know what I mean? <laughs> of course, it's like the big score. You know, <laughs> one last it's like job. oceans. Yeah, like one last job. One twelve thousand dollars they got from this one whale, and then he met through an anonymous social media app called Whisper. So Whisper is the pay right, pay guys. App. If you're listening, open a Whisper account. Yeah, open a Whisper account with a fake photo. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, he reverse image searched her to find the photo was just a complete. I was gonna say whatever. that would be like number one, but again, it's like if you don't reverse image search and then you still get everything you want out of this arrangement. It's a weird thing. Yeah. Other than the fact that, if, I guess, after the fact, you find out you're talking to a dude and you got scammed, then you're like, oh, I got scammed. But in the like at the time, you didn't. We don't know. I, I guess, though, if you if you rely on going back to the spank bank for that, and you go, <laughs> that, just, sure. that just bankrupted the bank. Yeah, that was a yeah. run on the spank bank. <laughs> right? You go, the, the spank bank's empty now. There's nothing left. Because it's a run I, on the spank I bank. I found out that it's all a lie. So <laughs> that, That's a run on the spank <laughs> bank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a quick second here to tell the fellas about Nutrafol. Now listen, you don't got to choose between better hair growth and your health. There's a holistic solution for men that promotes both healthier hair and whole body wellness. Now you want to get on this. Nutrafol is physician formulated to be 100% drug free. They are natural, medical grade botanicals in consistently effective dosages so you get the most reliable results. If you don't know about Nutrafol already, healthier hair growth takes time. So you'll begin to experience thicker, stronger, faster growing hair in just three to six months. Thicker, stronger, faster. Yeah, thicker, <laughs> stronger, faster. thicker, stronger, faster growing. Get ahead of thinning hair with Nutrafol's whole body approach to hair growth. No drugs, no compromises. Nutrafol's the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. Pretty big news. Ew. Clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. So in a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. So Nutrafol is trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors. Physician formulated using natural medical grade ingredients, Nutrafol's drug-free patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health, which is you know, something yeah. that yeah. we all know we don't want to be messing with. No, sir. And that is a big selling point if you ask me. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com slash men and entering the promo code BOYSCAST to save $15 off your first month's subscription. This is the best offer anywhere. It's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping and handling on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men, promo code BOYSCAST. Next, we are going to tell you about Cozy Earth, and we've oh, been telling you- Loving the Cozy Earth. Loving the Cozy Earth. Loving the clothes. We are loving the sheets. Yeah, I'm loving it all. The women are loving the clothes. Yeah, my girlfriend does actually really love the pants. Everyone loves the pants, and I actually wore the pants out as well, because one thing Danny mentioned was that the pants, they're like- pajama pants with nice material but they are actually pretty reasonable yeah to like wear you out. don't look like a like a schlub when maybe you not to a to wedding yeah you're like, not gonna wear yeah. them to a wedding but you could wear them like out no it's a, probably the nicest the shirt that i have is probably the nicest material of any shirt that i've ever owned in Easy. my life cozy earth crafts luxury goods that transform your lifestyle they've been featured on oprah's favorite things all products are made from responsibly sourced viscose and bamboo 
Products come with a 10-year warranty, and Cozy Earth's men's loungewear is crafted from the same breathable and luxurious material as their bedding. Cozy Earth loungewear offers optimal comfort while maintaining flattering, elegant fit. So if we can put a recommendation on this, we're putting a recommendation on this. Cruise around. Check it out at CozyEarth.com. And Cozy Earth has provided us an exclusive offer for our listeners today, which is 35% off. So they're not messing around. Ooh. When you use the code BOYSCAST, check that out at CozyEarth.com. And now let's get back into our show. So this is, uh, we've been sort of predicting that like co- long COVID's the the uh, original, essentially. It's the new fibro. <laughs> yeah, the, long COVID's the new fibro. Long COVID's the new fibromyalgia. And I actually thought that I was like, well, I was feeling very uh, lethargic. Yeah. And I was thinking that. I was thinking, I was like, maybe I'm just like out of shape. Maybe I'm getting older. And I was like, oh, I was vaping too much. So I quit vaping completely because I run every day and I still work out and stuff and I'm in fairly good shape. So I basically, I'm like, I'll, I'll only, uh, I quit vaping completely, eat it like a bit healthier, but nothing too crazy on that front. And it's like completely back to yeah, normal. Yeah, vaping. So, and the then I was telling- I mean, it probably doesn't do- like wonders for your lung capacity and stuff, which then probably my lungs were actually fine. But yeah, maybe that relates to everything. Yeah. But I looked it up and a lot of people were saying it's like just general fatigueness. Yeah. So that's completely out of my life now. Interesting. Yeah, yeah definitely. You sell vapes. <laughs> Yo, if you're listening to the vape industry, I think it's going to be worse than cigarettes. I think people are going to find out. Uh, you know what? I was talking to, uh, yeah, this, this is one, one thing that I find to be, those this time too. yeah, this is one thing I do find. I was talking to a comic we know, and she was vaping, and then I was like, oh, you used to smoke? And she's like, no. That's what everyone did. Yeah. That is so weird to have never, like, that that's me. What, I know, but no, but you used to smoke a little bit. Well, like, if I'm partying. That's what I'm saying, but then you kind of, I feel like you replaced it, and then you kind of got into just vaping more, and it seems like less than smoking, but just to, like. I never smoked more than, like, once a week. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I still find that weird to be, like, vaping and never, like, that is the thing that people argue against, where you're like, it's people who never even smoked are getting hooked on this shit because it tastes like strawberries. Yeah, well, also, someone just gives it to you at a party, and it's, like, yeah. fun, and then you're just like, let me, let me, give me that for a while yeah. they're like i'll have a back you're like go buy a new one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're hooked now go buy your own <laughs> yeah but I, I in my mind i sort of thought i was like okay maybe i have long covid because it's this fake sure yeah you go i don't know what else explains it so i'm one person I mean, there's no tests for it either so you just it's just if you say you have it you have it you, if you say you have it you have it and i know 90 people that are like i have long covid and you go you're just fat yeah like or just like you just kind of you're don't, don't want to go back to work. You smoke. Like, you know you what I mean? You don't want to go back to work. You don't want to go back to work. <laughs> yeah. Whatever million things. But this, so now they're, they've really clinged on to it where it's like, it can't be diagnosed. People just say they have it. So this article that HuffPost just released, it goes, what not to say with someone who has long haul COVID. And then the whole thing is just like, there's no, basically don't say anything to do you them. Think they, Never do, question them, whatever they have. Do you think they just straight up control f on their, uh, what to say to somebody with fibromyalgia yeah. article? 1,000%. <laughs> find and did. replace on that? Find and replace. <laughs> So this is, okay, so they go, the majority of people, uh, they're, they're, she's talking about her long COVID, by the way, like she has, yeah. she talks about it like she has, you know, full-blown AIDS, basically. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a goddamn, it's like, doctor, give it to me straight, I can handle it, and he goes, have a seat. You got long COVID, he goes, oh, it's worse than I thought. Say it ain't oh, so. Say, yeah. Before we have sex, I should tell you something, <laughs> something you should know about me. I got the vid, the, the long vid. Long vid. It's the bad one. The bad one. What does that mean? It's like, not really sure, but... <laughs> not really sure, but slightly I Slightly tired sometimes. Slightly tired, like watching TV a lot. I love TV, a little lethargic. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I can't go to your... <laughs> That's what me with long COVID. You go, what does it mean? It goes, eh. I'm not going to be able to go to your friend's party. <laughs> <laughs> I got the vid. But you have, but you are going to your friend's party tomorrow. That's the thing about the vid. Uh, you never know. <laughs> you never know what you can and can't do. It's the silent botherer. <laughs> it's the silent botherer. He goes, ah, uh, so ooh, I won't be able to take that garbage out. I, I got the vid. But you go, well, you just went golfing yesterday. You go, that's the thing about the vid. You never know. What do you think if you had to guess the the male to female breakdown of long COVID? Ninety percent for, pe- for people who are like say they ninety percent right? female. Ninety percent female. That's the other thing about COVID too. It's like so many people did in the whole pandemic just sat there like eating, you know, getting big, yeah, doing nothing, not yeah. exercising, getting depressed, and then you're like, okay, now you don't, and then you lost your job, so now you're unemployed. 
So you basically like don't have a job, you don't have will to live. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's not. And even you're like, the, oh, I'm a little, la- I'm a little more lethargic, and you go, yeah, that all. I don't even out. think it's the loss of the job thing. No, I think I just think it all adds up. I think there's people who are like, hey, their job's like you got to come back to work, and they're they've become accustomed to working from home. Of course, that's one of them. And they go, well, I can't come back to work, but I can do my job from home because uh, I have long COVID. Uh, you don't know what it's like to live. You can walk a mile in my long COVID shoes. I mean, I can't walk a mile in my long COVID shoes. I have long COVID. Don't ask me anything. This is the thing. Don't say, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Because this, <laughs> this kind of statement minimizes and it has toxic positivity and false reassurance. So like the, anything other than, oh my God, that's the worst thing sure. ever. Basically, I mean, I guess that is the right answer. I'm sure people who are like, oh, I just found out I have terminal cancer. Because my- That's what they're treating it like. My response would be, don't worry, everything's going to be, be okay. Fine, dude. Right? Like that is what I would <laughs> say to somebody. Because I'd be so like awkward and I'd be like, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. And you're like, yeah, but we all know it's not. Yeah, and you walk in and you don't have any not. arms and legs. And I'm like, you'll be good there, buddy. And you go, I'm not though. I have to roll around and you go, honestly, you it's got fine, this. Dude, Help you roll. Yeah, you got this. Pop you in the hammock. You want me to pop you in that hammock? You go, I'm honestly, you're really good. You go, want to go golfing tomorrow? You go, I can't golf I anymore. Can't. I go, I'll see you on the course, pal. Yeah, right. You'll be golfing in no time. You go, I won't though. Yeah. Yeah. So that is kind of a bit of what it is. Sure. But this is generally just advice for at least, well, at least something like this is for any sort of malady. This is just, don't. Well, this do. is, you, but, but, but again, just they're treating this it in the, like it's the real one. Yeah. So they, so oh, they yeah. go, don't say that. They go, <laughs> Every basically, you can use this for like someone goes. Did you just sleep with my wife? You go. I have long COVID. You go. What the fuck? You go. Don't ask anything. Don't say anything about it. Sure. Don't say. At least you've recovered. So if you had COVID before mm. and now you don't have COVID anymore, you go. You you can't. They don't want you to say. <laughs> well, at least you don't have COVID. You go. What it, don't you get? Yeah, I'm. In, I do have COVID. I have the COVID that never ends. Yeah. So that's what they want you to say. You go, so before you were like bedridden and now you're like, oh, now you're up and at them at least. You yeah. kind of, you know, you're just a little tired and they go, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. The photo that they use, by the way, is <laughs> What so was the photo? Funny. I didn't see it. <laughs> it's exactly. I'll show you a picture. It's exactly. Tony the, popped that up. The exactly <laughs> the photo it. that you think it's like. Uh, Lazy looking girl. <laughs> yeah, it's like two chicks. One just like bigger girl. The other one looks like a lesbian. And she and just she's just it. consoling her, and she just looks like this. She just looks like I can't do anything. She looks like I'm gonna have to order takeout again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to do Uber Eats one more time. <laughs> It's been long COVID. How many people that call them there? You know what would be the worst is there's probably so many people like like kind of like New York chicks that their parents are paying their rent and they're calling their dad. Like their dad's like, of course. get a job, finish school. She's like, dad, you have to just pay for my rent and I need Uber Eats. Like I have long COVID. What I, don't I you I can't understand? go to the grocery store. I can't do anything. Yes. I'm just like, I can't do anything other than- Ted, your daughter food. is disabled. Yeah, literally. And this will never end. I'm going to have this for the next 10, 15 years. I'm curious what the insurance companies are, are going to, how they're treating this. Because the insurance companies are not just going to be like, oh, I guess you have long COVID. We'll just pay you out. Yeah, pay you out you, for the rest of your until life. Until you figure this out. So they're going to be like trying to get a battery of tests together. I just busted quick. Ah, it's a long COVID, sir. <laughs> Sorry. You know what? Long COVID's acting up. You're going to have to get out. <laughs> My long COVID acts up really bad after sex. That's when you're going to have to fucking. Yeah. Long COVID's going yeah. crazy right now. Don't say at least you've recovered. Don't say I know how you feel. I've had similar symptoms. So if you've also had something like yeah, if you've also had I've lungs, also been tired. No, you go. You go. No, this is the worst thing. You can't relate. No one can relate. They're having a very. It's a unique, terrible experience sure. that no. Don't one get me wrong too, because we've we've talked about this before, and then some people are like, "No, I do actually have long COVID." Like people do have it. But I know. Most people don't. Yes, that, that's. Ex- I told you. I thought I might have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was this. Yeah, well, when there's but no I wasn't. Tests, really, I wasn't well, using it as an excuse. But yeah, like, but also when there's no test for it, then it's it is easy for like if you're hearing everybody in COVID and all that stuff, just be like. But even oh, the long COVID might be it. something else. Like it might just be a separate thing. Who knows what's going on? No one knows anything that's going on. No. But whenever there's an excuse that whenever there's a thing where they go. The bo- you hit the nail on the head where you go, what's the demographic? Whenever they go, there's, hey, there's this new thing that makes you tired. You don't have to do anything. You can't test. You go, lo and behold, the lazy <laughs> community all has it. Yeah, exactly. Lo and cool. behold, the like active community, you know, what yeah. small percentage of people yeah, have it. Yeah, like 1% of people are like, yeah, I can't like do these long runs anymore. And, and it's the really f- fucked me up. Yeah, exactly. And the fat, like, you know, 
I, I can't come to work any more community. Sure. All the big People surprise. Every hate their job and capitalism happen to not be able to work anymore. I mean, honestly, on that front, if you are able to scam your job of not coming in because of a fake disease, yeah, don't get, all the power I got to no you. love loss here for insurance companies. If you <laughs> yeah. want to scam insurance companies, I am all in favor of that. Just don't bring that shit around me. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. 100%. Don't I don't don't bring that shit around the boys, guys. No. Where you're like, listen, oh uh, no, you just scam your insurance company in silence with dignity. That's a good point. I like yeah. a good scam. Yeah. Don't say I hope you feel better soon. <laughs> yeah, you can't say that. <laughs> That's what I'll say. <laughs> Don't say I hope you feel better soon. It goes, seems like a nice thing to say, right? But really, it can minimize a long hauler's experience <laughs> because the people hate having their experiences minimized. Oh my god! The oh gist of this whole god. article is that like, do anything that suggests this isn't the single worst thing that's ever happened. In this the is literally of the world. like dealing with like a toddler who's having a fit. <laughs> is you don't be like, don't laugh, don't minimize their experience. Be like, it's really tragic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You <laughs> you're rattle find, broke. Yeah, yeah. That you can't find your favorite toy. I oh know. my god! Yeah, this is. <laughs> We're here for you. We see you. <laughs> we hear you. You're valid. <laughs> that you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> It, it is a very big like this telling them they're valid, their feelings are valid. Sure. Everything that you think and feel is correct. Yep. No one has ever experienced anything even half as bad as what you are close. currently going Not even through. Fucking close. Want to know a fun little statistic here? Yeah. Men have more fun dreams than women. <laughs> We're not talking about like life dreams. We're talking about literally like sleeping at night dreams. They legitimately did a study on what the <laughs> dreams guys and girls have. And they said common dreams and they were like, so men, I'll just, uh, 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 put, we'll get this graph on the screen, but men uh, have, <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> they're more likely to dream about non-flying magical powers. So yeah. dudes are dreaming about powers, superior mental abilities. Sure. So a lot of guys are having dreams where they have like, you know what I mean? They can read people's minds and stuff like that. Yeah. Killing someone they're putting in the fun. That's a funny one. Fun in dream. The, yeah, I thought that's a weird fun <laughs> dream category. Killing someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. Okay. So I'll tell you, that's a few of the guy ones. I'll yeah. just tell you a few of the girls one. Uh, being unable to find a toilet seat. <laughs> Apparently, a dream a lot of girls are having. Yeah. But it is funny that, like, yeah, so men are dreaming about fucking killing someone, uh, having superior mental abilities, flying, and girls are dreaming about, oh! <laughs> I, I didn't know that was so common for girls to be like, oh yeah. boy. Oh, 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 we're going to have a news here. <laughs> yeah, how would you, how funny would that be if you looked over your girl sleeping and, she, and she's just like, Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I'm about to blow this place up. <laughs> Where's the seat? Where's the toilet? <laughs> you're, you're sitting beside your girl. And she's just sitting there being like, let me in. Yeah. I do not. <laughs> this she's is a cold. We is got a, a ticking time bomb. She's in a cold sweat. She's like, huh, huh. What's the bathroom? Uh, what's the code? The <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What's the code? It's not working. I, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I. I forgot my. Well, I don't. I, I don't care if I don't for customers only. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a goddamn. I'm one of your best customers. I have the app. I don't care. I. <laughs> I have a loyalty card. Open up. I gotta shit my pants. I'm either going here or the in my pants. It's actually here. <laughs> so that's a big dream that girls are apparently having. Yeah, and snakes. <laughs> Snakes. It's weird that the girl ones are like nightmares. They're nightmares. The guys' more. ones are dreams. Freezing with fear, being the opposite sex. That's the that's still a lot of them are having dreams that they're dudes. Apparently, yeah. Being unable to find a toilet seat, and then dudes are finding money. <laughs> that's a fucking funny dude finding dream. Money. <laughs> I've never had a dream. Well, I've never had a dream. Go, yo, sick. <laughs> yo, <that's> money. <laughs> That is the, that's the Jewish dream. Yo, that'd be so funny, Danny, if I found out that your dreams were just like, ooh. <laughs> oh, hello. I'm just Scrooge McDuck, literally just swimming through a pool of coins. That's that's you waking up every morning. It's just you walk in, there's like another hundo. Oh, hello. And then I w actually wake up and I go, ah. Every morning you wake up pissed off. Yeah, I just the whole dream is I just am like filling a bag of cash and then right as I'm about to get to the bank to deposit that's, it, I wake up and I go, ah, that's, that's you. fuck. <laughs> just edged myself. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> oh, there's one. Uh, what do we have here? <laughs> oh, is that yours? No? Okay. 
oh my god what do we have here <laughs> another, another green back come on 50 what's that what's that 250s I'll pop those in the pocket there oh a money clip <laughs> oh that'll be good pop that in the pocket there mmm nice is this anybody's <laughs> another win for Danny <laughs> Uh, oh, that'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <That's>, <laughs> oh, <laughs> never had that one. I've definitely, you had definitely never had finding being money. nude. Like being that's nude, whole yeah, that's a. I, I no, I guess that's a sort of a fear. I think they, they're putting that in the fun dream, but I guess that would be a nightmare, sort of. But yeah, yeah. well, it depends who else is nude. Yeah, I, that's. Are they talking about your banging girl? <laughs> yeah. and they're describing that as being nude. Yeah, like this. Were they trying to be like a little? I was, I was safe? Had, a, what's had a weird dream where I was nude. What were you doing? Ah, just being nude. You know, with fucking ten hot models. <laughs> yeah. Being I just, nude. Just I just me had ten hot models in my bed. Just being nude. You know, you know how it goes. Couple people being nude. <laughs> Even Danny's being nude dreams. It'd be like. She's like, she's like, yeah, you like that? You like that? Actually, move over. I think <laughs> I think there's a hundred. <laughs> Is that a Benjamin? Out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Get off me. Get off me. Get off me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a Benjamin. There's a Benjamin. But that's a Benji. <laughs> pretty sure that's a Benji. <laughs> no, Danny. That's your dream is going through someone's couch looking for coins. <laughs> that is not far off. <laughs> it's not even Benji's. It's like, yeah, it's just coins. I'll talk. It's a quarter right there. Is it a quarter? Yeah, it's sleep, like on the plane, you're sleeping. You go, is this anyone's quarter? <laughs> <laughs> is this anyone's quarter? You ever dream about being on that plane and finding a quarter? <laughs> just, like, quarter. <laughs> just like taking a piss in the toilet. Ah, oh, oh, a quarter. <laughs> a quarter in the, t- this oh, quarter in the toilet bowl. This <laughs> might just got a little bit better. <laughs> you're reaching into the toilet bowl to get a quarter. <laughs> Yeah, just come on. <laughs> easy. Easy. <laughs> easy, does it? Success! <laughs> Reaching in the toilet bowl to get a quarter. <laughs> That's your dream. You come out and then <laughs> you wake up. Ah. Oh, oh. What a what hell. Uh, okay. <laughs> Susan Wozniak uh, at YouTube stepped down. Yeah, I saw that. And they go, it's a huge concern. Senior level women are calling it quits after decades of climbing the corporate ladder, right? I mean, she kind of reached the pinnacle of... She got to the top, yeah. Yeah. Like, this is... Is there any sort of negative behind her leaving? Yeah, well, they they have a pretty big negative, Danny. Which is less women in the workforce? <laughs> oh, yeah, but they're also... Their thing is, like, basically when guys get to be CEOs, they kind of to keep those jobs for a little longer. And she's saying that girls get to those jobs and they... You know, like quit them after way less. I mean, time. being a CEO is like being the like coach of an NBA team. Like you're not there for life. Like you better like you know cash that yeah. in. Like you like some guys. But are yeah, but they're stepping down when they weren't. They didn't. That's have what to. I'm saying. But most guys who like become the CEO of some company, you're like, yeah, I'm here for like five years and then I'm getting fired. For like of course. some downturn, I get fired and I you know I'm trying to make a ton of money. Yeah, because time. you know that it's a temporary position. Yeah, but for some places that's more than, like, you know, whatever. But anyways, the bottom line is this is not the first person this has happened to, right? Apparently all these women have slept down, but the reasons for it is pretty funny because obviously it's what happens. It's like, yes, you've already, like, you're like, hey, I'm currently worth, like, you know, $100 million now. Uh-huh. This is the hardest job in the world. Yeah. Like, I'm, I have a family that I don't see, and I'm, I have $100 million. Why am I working 95 hours a just week? Just to prove some points. And to be honest, yeah, it's, exactly. For most people, the truth is girls are just acting like any, the, those top Top level girls are probably acting like any rational dude. Yeah, like most most people in the world, if you give them a hundred million dollars, they're like, yeah, probably not going to put in the hundred hours anymore. No, it's a tiny percentage of people, For but sure. that tiny percentage happens. Which are probably the tiny male. percentage of people who would be in that position to begin with. Exactly, like not even. Really but apparently, doing. like more of them are male. I think is what the kind of breakdown is that the like that are keep it going even after you have the hundred. So you're saying million. that the gender gap, the pay gap, is women's fault. <laughs> well, they have some other reasons for it. I'll tell you what they're saying. Last week, she left the company and to start a new chapter focused on her family, health, and personal projects that she's passionate about. So there's actually not really any discrepancy. She says, she's like, yeah, yeah, I care more about my family and my health and my projects, right? Fine, yeah. And they said, she's the third female leader to leave in recent years at that level, following uh, two other people, blah, 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 blah. And she goes, so there's a lot of women that are getting to this 90-hour-a-week job 
and they're saying, you know what, I don't get to see my family. I don't like it anymore. It's not worth it. Yeah. So no. I, I would say at this point, you just put the Kermit meme up where they go, you know, all these women are saying it's like kind of this is too hard of a job and there's no point for it. You just kind of do that. But that's none of my, no, business. None of my business. Nothing is nothing to see here. No. <laughs> to be honest, there's nothing to see here. Even after they've climbed the ladder. So this is what they said, even though she said it's because her family. She goes, women in senior leadership face more headwinds than men do. And also everyday microaggressions. Ooh. So one of the reasons all the CEOs are stepping down is because of microaggressions. I hate microaggressions. <laughs> well, that's, that's so their theory bad. is she goes, I'm actually leaving because it's like way too much work and I'm rich already and I want to hang time with my family. They it's go, just microaggressions. microaggressions probably got you the bad. The thing is, if bad. you're the CEO, like, you know, if you want to rule with an iron fist, you could be like, oh, that guy keeps microaggressing me. You're fired. You, you could fire him if he's like, microaggressing. I think you're, if you're the CEO, you could just fire him. You could definitely microaggress him. Really but yeah. they also have more. So one of the other things is women have more to deal with on top of their CEO job, like carrying a greater responsibility and diversity and inclusion initiatives. So they have to do everything a guy does, plus they have to care about yeah. diversity and initiatives. I mean, I've been saying it forever. It's like probably a hundred times harder to be a woman. Than I've been saying that since the beginning of time. Yeah. So the one reason, so they go, it's possible they're stepping down because of microaggressions. It's also possible they're stepping down because they have to do so much diversity initiative. That's probably why the New Zealand <laughs> prime minister stepped down. She's like, you don't, yeah. Well, it, she actually did, if you know, she only did like six months or whatever, but with the amount of diversity initiatives and microaggressions she dealt with, it was like essentially like 10 years of- They should probably actually just- <clears throat> Measure it in like girl in president the, years. Yeah, but like in the history books, like they should probably just have her as the longest serving <laughs> prime just, minister, just- and you go why? factoring in all the other things. Well, if you factor in the diversity and the microaggressions. Well, I mean, is Barry Bonds really the home run king? No. That's right. I would say some girls probably the home run king. Probably. Yeah. The chick who played Rosie O'Donnell. Definitely. Yeah. And she said, is it possible that women, especially ones in power and influence, could also, so this is the third hypothesis, they might be leaving to start a new organization that's more inclusive and supportive of women in the workplace. So the third option is if it's not microaggressions and all the inclusive is that even though she said she wanted to go leave with her family, it's possible that one of the reasons she left is that she wanted to go start a new, more inclusive thing that isn't uh, Amazon. That's a good thing though, right? YouTube. It's like Amazon woman. <laughs> Well, she said she's not doing that, but they're oh. speculating that might be it. Sure. So the girl goes, no, I'm not doing that. And she goes, you might be, though. Yeah, you might be, though. You might be <laughs> just, you know, taking over the team, helping out all women by starting, you know, women only forward. She goes, first. I'm actually not doing that. She goes, you are. You probably are, though. Good I mean, chance you you're doing that. think about doing that. Maybe that's why she left. <laughs> going to take a quick second here to tell the people about Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day. Every day. Uh, when I was in Austin, I brought three different packets, yep. and I had them every morning. I'm, and I was, I'm going to Florida tomorrow. I'm packing, and we got all the little packets. And I have both. I have the travel packets, and I have the normal. I have not missed this. You know, I'm, I'm sure you've already heard. You've heard people like Ricky Gervais talking about it. You've heard people about Tim Ferriss talking about it. Joseph Rogan, good friend of mine. Your best friend, Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. <laughs> Joseph Rogan, you probably heard talking about it. Yeah. So this is what you want to do. I take it every morning. The first thing I do when I wake up. Sometimes it's hard to keep up with a supplement routine and it comes with a bunch of different products. So maybe sometimes it's hard to know which supplements to trust. So AG1 makes that so much easier. One scoop of powder mixed with water once a day. Maybe you're like us and you're always looking for life hacks, which is why I've come to love and trust AG1 by Athletic Greens, the all-in-one formula that makes it easy for me to cover my nutritional bases every day. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole foods sourced ingredients of the highest quality that give me major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. So if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens has given you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash boyscast. That's athleticgreens.com slash boyscast and check it out. And you know, I got to tell you about something that we may have already mentioned in the episode or we mentioned the, uh, later in the episode. I'm yeah. not exactly sure where okay. that goes. But this is Fume. And I actually have one in my pocket because as you know, quitting things is a very important. Be smart. Don't start bad habits. Maybe kick the habit. It's all things that we've heard a million times. But people still continue to have certain bad habits. And I am no different than these people. Are sp especially in the pandemic, yeah. a lot of people started to get involved about habits. with some bad Picking habits up. that we do not stand behind. Mm -hmm. 
And our sponsor, Fume, is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from bad habits that consume far too many of us. Fume is a natural, diffusive device that uses plants. And um, for those who are watching and not listening, you basically put the core in it, and that's how you do it. Yeah. Like that. Pretty cool. Uh, I gave it a spin last time. I've been dicking around with it. I do it when I'm editing. I've brought it. You can bring it on a plane. It's not a vape. It's not an electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. There's no nicotine in it. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habits for a positive one. Instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. It's cool and it's not doing anything bad for your body. The version two model is snappy and tactile. Mm -hmm. With an adjustable airflow dial and magnetic end cap, your fingers will always have something to do, which is true because you sort of, Mm. I actually do dick around with it. So the looks great. The feel is kind of fun to play with. It tastes great. And listen, the easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one, and Fume is designed perfectly for you to do just that. It's Fume's goal to make switching easy and enjoyable. They have thousands of five-star reviews and people who have successfully switched when other solutions didn't work. So head to tryfume.com, use the code BOYSCAST to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. The Journey Pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version 2 Fume to help kickstart your positive habits. That's tryfume.com t-r-y-f-u-m.com and use the code boyscast to save an additional 10% off your order today let's get back into it okay here's a good one so with uh this is like a am i the asshole sort of situation right yeah they kind of went super viral and basically it's been, i love the like all the poly stuff because it was like listen obviously if you want to be you know have you know live in a cube with nine people, mm-hmm. do whatever you want. It's called but a polycule. It, yeah, exactly. But it's always funny when it starts to, they try to, they, they're mad that like normal world won't sort of bend over backwards for their thing. Mm-hmm. And this woman, she goes, am I the asshole for not inviting my poly friend's partners to the wedding? So she's got this female friend and she's got like nine guys. She's in a relationship with three different men, right? Gotta, is that how it works? If you're poly, <laughs> then you got to invite them all? <laughs> that seems unreasonable. Yeah, that's so crazy. I don't, I've never, these people don't strike me as reasonable people. No. But that even seems unreasonable for them. That's, that. I'm also, but you'll never, there's a big twist ending too. Okay. They go, I'm getting married in September. My husband, Mike, and I are doing the wedding for 250 guests. And my best friend, Marissa, happily agreed. She's in a poly relationship with three partners Greg, Brandon, and Ace. Ace, Ace. is the. Ace can come. Ace's real name's not Ace either, no, by the way. Ace they, is a right. guy, man going by the name ace she's been with greg for five years blah 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 so the whole thing started when her husband said listen i know your friend has three different husbands but i don't want that bullshit at my wedding yeah because i'm gonna have to explain to people when she's walking around holding hands with the three different guys it's just gonna be you know you're only getting a gift from a single couple (laughs) like you're getting a couple's worth of gifts but then that's four plates you're paying for well it's kind of one of those things where you go you know that this is a whole big spectacle and you know that it's going to be one of those things where you're going to try to be stealing the And you know, you know they're not just dressing normal. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they're all dressing like various fishing lures and it's just going to be a whole <laughs> fucking thing. No way. You're saying that poly people dress like fishing lures <laughs> is the funniest thing? They probably do. They do. They look like a fishing lure. Yeah, they're all shiny and colorful. And so all sorts of weird little hooks. rings and rings and hooks and stuff like that. Yeah. So she's showing up with three guys wearing all sorts of hats. Wacky. And then everyone's, and then her, this is her parents are there. They're like, who's that couple? So everyone's looking at them. It's kind of like someone that's like, oh, I'm a barefoot person. It was like, can yeah. you, can you not be barefoot for the wedding? Is that possible to go two seconds? Yeah. I wonder if they could maybe, yeah, I guess they're not going to just out of just decency two of the guys pretend they're a gay couple for just the. They are perfect. sort of gay dudes. I think that's, yeah, yeah, that yeah. is the obviously reasonable one. It was like, listen, if there's two, if you're, if the four of you want to split up, we can make but it then happen. They're, but then they're like, well, I don't know them. <laughs> yeah. Well, then it's just the two guys you don't <laughs> two know. Random guys gay couple that i don't really know so why are they coming well that's exactly what you go why are you here it's like well the two of the us we're a gay couple but we're also boning that chick over there so we gotta be at this wedding what like what the obvious reasonable thing would be like for the girl to be like i'll be yeah, you get one date i'll bring one guy yeah one of your you like just like everybody else you get one you get a plus one like everybody else in the world you get one plus yes very reasonable so then this is so she basically d- did that and then uh 
when that happened, she goes, so when the invite went out, she called up immediately asking why she didn't have a plus three invite. So she's out of the gate sure. being like, hey, is there some and then sort you of mistake? Go, Dad, there's no such thing as a plus three. <laughs> you just made that up. <laughs> Well, first of all, you just invented a plus three. <laughs> yeah. That's never existed so you're before. You're the first person who's ever asked, why did I get a plus three? So, <laughs> Why don't I have a plus three's bald? Yeah. And then she goes, yes, why don't I have a plus three for the wedding? And then I explained to her why she doesn't. And she said, oh, and then hung up. So she wasn't happy, mm. right? And then next thing you know, Brandon's calling me and begging me to reconsider, saying they promise they won't act like they're together, um, except I can hear Greg in the bath, so they've called her now yeah. back. So Brandon's one of her boyfriends. Yeah. He's calling. Listen to this. So Brandon calls and says, we want you to reconsider. We promise we won't act like we're in a relationship. However, she can hear Greg in the background telling him to tell me to fuck off. <laughs> And I'm an asshole because he doesn't even want to go anymore. So they're having like a group phone call where funny. Brandon's like, hey, you know, we won't even act like we're together. And Greg's sort of in the corner being like, you can tell them we're, <laughs> we're fuck off. We'll hey, if like they don't them. accept me for me, then yeah. fuck them. I'll you tell know, you I don't what, even want you to come. I don't even, I'll tell that woman we'll be making out. We'll sit on each other's laps, all four of us. Or we don't even want to come. So that's Greg's in the background <laughs> having, a, having sort of a tantrum. Kind of explaining the type of thing you wouldn't want happening of at course, your wedding. Of course, you're just like these are all the reasons why I don't want you coming to begin with. Well, you, you if anything, you, you go. Well, doesn't this solve the whole thing? Brandon comes, Greg doesn't. Yeah, like we have pretty. The whole thing solved. You would like, think so. It, you would think so, but it didn't solve it. No. So this goes on forever, and then basically, she, uh, they, she starts. Everyone's telling her she's the asshole, and she calls up them and apologizes. The bride. Yeah. That's the world we're living in, where the bride apologizes to her. To the fucking polycule? And they did agree to come as a two couples, like you said. Oh, that's what it ended up being? So Greg, the crying one, fucking ended up, yeah, just, because they're, they're gay, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two guys are gay. So but there's just a gay her. couple that knows a different couple that are there. Yeah, but, the but we're living in a world where she posted this, and the obvious answer wasn't like, yeah, those people are crazy. Yeah, you're just, you're, your friends are psychos. <laughs> yeah. She ended up apologizing to these psychos. Yeah. Probably because they were going to crash the wedding. Like, does anyone have any objection? Like, I have an objection because you shouldn't marry bigots. Yeah, this is why Trump won. It's a little bit why Trump won. Yep. Actually, speaking of problems, there's a guide to non-discriminatory language, right? Okay. And someone sent me this, that fellow, this is at the universities. They yeah. Have this, this guide. You can't say fellows anymore? Well, they basically have every different one. Like, Father Time, they say replace, whatever, right? Yeah, like yeah, all, all it's just a thing we've seen a million times, but it's an actual book that universities are, like, hawking right now. And a friend of mine actually sent this, too. That's okay. Someone close to the pod. And uh, they said, this fellow, this is one of the most problematic words in language. The word fellow, they've described as the most problematic. Really? <laughs> this is the phone. Someone sent me an actual picture of the book. Okay. Fellow, yeah. this is one of the most problematic words in language and gender issues. Fellow is often judged as inclusive. Women receiving academic scholarships are called fellows, for example. Yeah. But it is also a synonym for men. Yeah. So they said that fellow, they want to, like they this were, whole like fellowships and stuff. Yeah. They say it's the most problematic word possible. Mm, that's... That's how good the word fellow is. It's pretty good. Isn't I mean, I solid? guess they don't like when like uh, someone will just aggr address a group of people as guys. The only thing that they don't, they go, the folksy fella or feller is incontestably masculine. Um, substitutes for the noun include person, partner. So they say colleague instead of fellow. A colleague? Doesn't have the same thing. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, fuck that. A mate, a pair. No, it's a fellow. Yeah. Yeah. Freaking take a hike. Take a friggin' take hike. Take a hike, fella. Yeah. So, that's, what I, uh, that's what I got for you. Well, they've been so, well, all this stuff's been having, you know, they've yeah. been going on the poly people having their way. There is a hero out there that is living his truth, a man living his truth. And I'd love to see it. I'm a trophy husband with three wives. They work while I stay at home. Yeah, you do. Good for him. What do you, what do you, did you take a peek at this guy? Oh yeah, I did. Af African American fellow, yeah, three larger white women. <laughs> yep. I don't know why that's any of that's relevant. <laughs> I'm just trying to just, paint the picture just, for people. Yep. <laughs> but it's so funny though because He's I won fucking G uh, of the year. This guy's the G of the year. He says he goes on the prize, I'm DJ the prize. academic style. He goes yep. on the prize. On the prize. Yeah. 
This is what we like to see out there. We like to see a man, and he goes, one woman, the three of you can't, and by the way, the girls were sort of on board with it, yeah. and she goes, I brought this other girl home, and they all look the same. That's the best yeah, part. Yeah, they all look kind of the same. And uh, he doesn't work. Doesn't work. He's got three incomes. Straight. I know, that's what I'm saying. But that's, he like, does but he's work. he's proud of the fact that he he's works like, as a professional stay-at-home husband. Yeah. I love this guy. The guy must be just slinging the most insane dick to be able to... Keep They've actually going. mentioned that they said he gets a little much in the bedroom. That's why they like to have three because he likes to have sex all day because he's not yeah. doing anything, just dicks around all day. No pun intended. Nothing wrong with that. He's like an old school. Well, that's like, the funny part about being like the king. guy because the girl one, like in that, it's like, okay, you have sex with him. But this one, he's still the guy and the girls are like, he's just, we don't, like, it's fine. You don't have to have sex with us. You can just, yeah. we'll just give you the money. <laughs> I mean, this guy's figured it out. He goes... A man who calls himself a trophy husband has revealed that not only does he have three wives, but he doesn't work. Comparing his role to the polyamorous family on a chessboard, dad of two, Nick Davis, says he doesn't have a job because the king doesn't move around much yeah. while the queen has all the power. There you go. Chess reference. He has some, not, he has some nice moves. Probably spend a lot of his days on chess.com. And the woman say, it's nice to have some helping hands with my husband. Well, it might sound unusual. Um, April says she's happy having the extra woman in the relationship to m meet Nick's needs. Yeah. So it sounds like Nick's got- They have got two like, extras. Well, that's the thing. It sounds like Nick's got a lot of needs going on. Yeah. Nick's a lot to handle. Let's just say that, she says. <laughs> So we do want to do a shout out. They go, Nick's a lot to handle in general with his personality and his nice stuff. They, they hate this guy. Yeah. And this is also like an advertisement for Nick. I'm sure some people, women probably be like, you need a fifth? 100%. Like, what is this guy doing? Girls have been reaching out to Nick after this. Yeah. In fact, it was actually April who introduced the 39-year-old husband. So basically the girl was like, this Nick guy's a lot. We need to find someone else. Yeah, and and then they did. They just did his bidding. Yeah, he's, got, he's literally got them, them just wrapped around his finger. He is. Uh, he, I mean, he's smiling in every photo. Oh, we just want to just do a boys' cast shout out to him. Yeah, Nick is the man. Shout out to Nick, who's the man. Everyone wanted us to get into Tulpa stuff, but before that, we're going to do the bo Bozo of the Week. Yeah. Because you've been posting a lot of these, and I post one. You have one on your thing. So me and Danny make satire videos, and everyone always thinks they're uh, real. I have actually the the best. Yeah, not so best, but get I have you. I'll really, read mine. You no, get no, yours. but I have no. Oh, oh. for the comments, I don't have them pulled up. What do you mean you have it on your phone? Oh, you posted on Instagram, in, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, my phone's in the kitchen. Okay, so I'll read yours too. Yeah, I read mine too. Okay, so for mine, uh, I made the video how I'm Madonna's surgeon. Yeah, and this guy goes, "Are you?" <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm Madonna's surgeon. I went and walked around. I was saying that I can't get work, and I was walking around doffing to people in surgery. This guy would quote tweeted me, are you effing serious? You do that to someone, you shouldn't be allowed near anyone anymore. Yeah. You were only interested in the money, mate, not being a good surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy's not happy with the not fact happy. that I was Madonna's surgeon. <laughs> no, no. So uh, Danny has posted one. This one is maybe the most percentage-wise of people being fooled by this. Which actually. is your new, uh, new project. Pro I basically just, one. James O'Keefe, I'll tell you the whole thing. James O'Keefe, literally, he like did his resignation speech. Uh -huh. And then I saw it and I go like, Oh, I could like do a green screen and make this look really realistic. Just I and and I watch it. Saying and I'm then, the new CEO. And there was one frame where he walks around the desk, so I could steal you that could frame, steal the frame or whatever. And then I go, okay, I'm just gonna do. And I did it in like an hour, like the whole thing. I was like, it was like basically just so quick. This was the most people have been fooled. Yeah, like literally, I just opened up Twitter and someone just goes, "Fuck you guys." There's no PV without James. <laughs> Like this is like all my mentions. And, and you shit. said you're the new CEO, and you're I'm not going to be talking about Pfizer anymore. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're, we, we've defeated Big Pharma because everybody's like, "Oh, Big Pharma got to them, right?" And I go, we're, "We've defeated Big Pharma. We're just going to continue tricking homosexuals, and that's about it." And you know, just back to basics. <laughs> People are losing. This guy says, "You are not James. Um, I'm not going to watch criminals. Uh, or <laughs> you are not James. Like you, I am going to watch criminals that all." Oh, this guy can't even spell. No, no, generally no. That's you a, will that's a, <laughs> you will fall hard. <laughs> they love James, not the company. We will allow him only. I hope you get everything you deserve. So this guy's here's a good one. The new CEO of Project Veritas looks unprofessional, <laughs> disheveled, unshaved. <laughs> looks like he just took off his jacket, did a line, and came up to talk to everyone. I mean, look at his eyes. I mean, I will say the funniest part about these things is the <laughs> type of person who responds like this is not the type of person who thinks they are easily fooled or manipulated. No, no one They does. think they are like the sharpest people who are like, you cannot get one past me. 
one hundred percent. Like pretty consistently. They're just yeah. well, it's people also that are like <laughs> you can't get one past them. They're you because they're like I I uh I, I I'm like uh like red pilled essentially. Yeah, you they're know what I mean? exactly. Like, you know when some some past me and they just live in like a constant state of being outraged. Yeah, but they're just like yeah. They, they but if you ask them like and I often will click on their things or whatever and then uh i actually so my i have because i've been trying to think that's of the, the type of person that just like they're just like sitting in their house like pacing around with like yeah. matt walsh videos playing and they're so, just like they're <laughs> kicking drywall like I, he's just like he's like <laughs> and you know they're freaking as you as we speak they're rip like they're literally 10 surgeons are ripping a one-year-old yeah. penis off and you're just like you're just like kicking the wall oh. of his house tearing <laughs> stuff down like, tearing. And, then on, and then on top of that that's what he's dealing with right now he's currently watching that and then he has to see the new project the new, yeah, yeah, this, see go tear and check out this new project <laughs> veritas ceo <laughs> He's just, just a fucking clown. Just smashes his computer. I want to because I've I've been trying to figure out what to do like with the whole these like specific type of people, but I want to do a thing where basically like a scientific study came out that liberals are more easily to be fooled than conservatives, and then just post. So then they'll start posting it, being like, "See, I found like because they're generally <laughs> mostly conservative." <laughs> you're saying you're gonna so post that I'm gonna post a, a, a like fake a, study, a fake study that liberals Come are easy. On. Oh, you'll look see at you. <laughs> look the, at Mister my final act, Mister Original Prankster. <laughs> <laughs> look at Daddy's. Quite the freaking <laughs> you you were happy with that one, weren't you? Yeah, I was, I was enjoying myself. <laughs> so that is the bozo of the week. Bozo of the week. <laughs> we're, I guess I'm I'm fooled by sometimes too, but it's funnier on those ones if they're obvious. But yeah, I guess everyone gets fooled the internet. Yeah, so I got fooled by that kid falling off the stage. We're gonna be getting fooled like more and more as the time goes on. Yeah, it know? doesn't count though with like the a like the AI fooling is like a different level of fooling. Like like we're fooling people with comedy sketches that are clearly fake, and how we have comedy in our handles. Yes, and you're like like I have people sometimes will like be calling me Danny and then the name I use like in consecutive tweets. I don't know who this, I don't know who this Ryan Long <laughs> comedy guy is, but you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's but yeah, not you, funny. He should, yeah, he, he should do comedy because he's not going to be a good plastic surgeon. Like literally dude, I have my Twitter open and like, so the timeline's refreshing and like one minute ago, what a dope it's over. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this, <laughs> This Danny Jokes guy should probably get a career doing jokes because he's not going to have a career in journalism. So Tulpas, for people that have not heard our old Tulpas episode, because we haven't covered it in a little bit. Yeah. But, so essentially, there's these people, and they've figured out that they can manifest another person inside their body. Right? I still barely know what this is. I know exactly the what The degree it is. to which, it, the amount that we've it's covered not, this. They don't consider it split personalities. Yeah. They're like, I have essentially... A, a person living inside me and there's a couple of them and they've essentially the way that they see it is they've manifested it like uh you have to work at it a split personality they just have it it came yeah whereas a tulpa they have like a, a they they make it happen okay whereas they go they manifest them they're like do they ever get out of control where you can't like, handle the tulpa like are you always just because how is it different from just doing a character for the people who are listening, maybe for the well, first a character time. you're consciously doing a fake character, whereas this is a real deal. This is a real deal thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so these guys have got these, these got these other little people living in their yeah, bodies. You know what I mean? Sure. They they all live in the stomach. They all sort of live in the stomach. Yeah, that's how I picture it. And they have all their Reddit groups. And so it's ever wondered what it would be like to have a mental companion who can think and act on their own. That's how they described it. Okay. And you manifest it. That's what a tall person. But it's is. not a split personality. No, no, no. A voice in your head? They don't consider themselves schizophrenic. Right. They have this guy living inside of them. <laughs> it's a dude inside of a dude. Okay. You you of all people should know what it's dude, like to have a dude the, inside, inside of a dude. I've had a dude inside of me. <laughs> I, I mean, you know what I mean. Um Yeah, you do. Yeah. So there's a couple of choice collections here. Yeah. The first one, this guy goes. My tulpa and I have different interests, so spending time together is very difficult. So essentially, <laughs> <laughs> so his tulpa, he's a bit of a sports guy. Yeah, and then he just in from here, he just hears like, "I hate sports." I hate the tulpa. And they're, but they're the annoying. I hate sports. They go, "Yay, sports ball!" Oh, go, I guess they're watching sports ball. Uh, go team! I hope they score all the points. <laughs> 
he's just sitting there trying to watch the yeah, he's just trying to watch the Jets. Yeah. And he's got, oh I guess it's sports balls playing. <laughs> oh up. my god. Do they ever like hit themselves? Yeah, you sort of punch your stomach. You'll shut Keep up. Keep it down. Tulpa. So he's he's having a big problem because he likes saying you've got this Tulpa to hang out with. You're essentially like manifesting an imaginary friend, and then your imaginary friend doesn't want to do any of the stuff you want to do. I've been having trouble spending this is a girl, by the way, and a spending time with a girl. Always girls. Yes. I mean they're mostly girls. <laughs> the majority of these the Tulpa. Biologically are they're female. Whether they how they express themselves is anything. The majority of the Tulpa people are girls. Yeah. Guys, I've been having trouble spending time with Melanie. My tulpa. She and I have different interests, and it's getting harder and harder every day to do what she likes. Harder and harder. And so, for example, she likes to play Monopoly, and I'm just okay with it. So lately, I'm not feeling it. So essentially, you can extrapolate what's happening. She's sitting by herself playing a one-person game of Monopoly, yeah. but she hates it. She hates it. <laughs> So, it's kind of more than a one person. Yeah, game. but how like yeah, how funny is it being one person sitting there doing something you hate? <laughs> like if you're playing video games, you're like my tall pup wants to play video games, but I hate it. So then you're just sitting there being like, I ah, hate this. Stinks. <laughs> you know, why do you stop playing video games? Like, yeah, I wish I could. I hate doing I hate, this. But the tall in control. Ugh, my tall wants to play solitaire, and I hate solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> So that's all that you want to talk about first world problems. First world problems, that's a first world problem. Is like you're sitting there playing Monopoly by yourself and you don't want to, but you have to because you're the, per, you're the Melanie's inside of Melanie, you. Melanie, who lives inside of you. Loves Monopoly. Loves Monopoly. <laughs> it's funny, the Melanie is like, especially now too, because it's like such an old person game. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, then you've, you're, like you're, you've manifested this Tulpa and it just wants to play Monopoly by itself. Yeah. Or do you find other people? So I don't that, know. Like, does Melanie have her own friends? Like, be like, yo, Melanie, call up your Monopoly friend? Yeah, so are you just playing Monopoly and you're just sitting there grumpy? Like, pass, go. And they're like, hey, you don't have to play. And she's like, yeah, I do, actually. I kind of do. I don't really <laughs> have a choice because Melanie's in control right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, can yeah. you just, like, that's what I don't get. Can you just be like, Melanie, you know what? I don't like Monopoly. I don't want to play. Or is it like, then Melanie's like a bratty kid who's crying all day. That's what's, like, that's the gist I get. Like, Melanie can't force the Monopoly. I don't think she can force it, but she can grump around. Right. So you can basically so have... Nope. Yeah, that's you hit the nail on the head. If she doesn't give Melanie her monopoly time, he's going to be sort of grump moping around like yeah. you, you don't even care. That's fair. So that's what she's yeah she bring, brings her to like a sort of a snakes and ladders cafe you know mm. snakes and lattes oh, the sort board of games. situation yeah the board game cafe then she goes there and she's playing with all these nerds and you have to just sit there and well Melanie and you're like Melanie you've played for five hours you go no then let's just go okay, okay. no there's a time limit I guess okay. I'll flip the board <laughs> yeah yeah. Lately, she's not feeling it. So, like, I feel a total sense of dread when she wants me to do something I don't want to do. I do try to make time to spend with her, but it's just getting harder and harder these days. So you're basically watching. You're doing all this boring shit that you don't want to do. But I if have you an don't, idea. Kill her. She, th that's, she's probably thinking about that. Kill her. Kill the Tulpa. Well, Melanie might be thinking kill about killing Melanie you. Before she kills you. Okay, so here's another Tulpa situation that might be even better. I've caught feelings for my partner's tulpa. So this person is dating someone they both have tulpa. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, do you know that? This, you saw this one, right? This is the yeah. most confusing one. They're all, I'm, I don't know. I might be, must be a simple man. Oh, you're a boomer. I am a boomer. Okay, boomer. You don't know what, how, what it's like to have a tulpa that's dating someone else's tulpa? Yeah. I have a crush on one of my partner's tulpas and need some advice on this. Oh, also, I have five tulpas myself. I like, though, that they, I don't know <laughs> if this was intentionally where they said tulps. No, like they've shortened them. They've shortened it. Because they're like, they're so, this is so their world. They're, they're just tulps. So this person, yes. Yeah, so they have five tulpas. And then my partner has three tulpas and I have five. And one of my partner's tulpas is so cute. He's very soft spoken. And uh, he has a lot of trauma. And his backstory of his childhood was not good. So to speak, he has a hard time opening up due to the trauma. Yeah. So basically, she's dating some guy that's like, you know, grew up in New Jersey, normal life. You know, yeah. went to school, became, you know, he has a job in marketing, but the Tulpa is like, every day I was burned. <laughs> they used to put me down and they chained me to a pipe. I was chained to a pipe for nine years. I had to shit where I slept for nine years. I was living in a bucket of shit. Where is my, where's, where's the Monopoly board? Your, your boyfriend, your boyfriend don't know how good he got it. 
you know what? He, the Tulpa is sort of playing like a bad boy thing too, where he's like, you know what? Stay away from me. I'm bad news. Now I have one question. I got a lot of you skipped this one part, but she says I'm five one and he's five eight. The Tulpa is, but is the boyfriend also five? Oh, there are, yeah, of course, obviously. Okay, or does she just crouch down a little bit? I don't know, Ryan. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just the. Uh... Listen. Well, because she says, for reference, my partner made how he looks. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> That's what I've been saying. So this is two freaks living in a house, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this isn't some dude who works in an office. These are two. How do these two freaks even find themselves? So it's like legitimately the girl. Reddit. Goes, uh, but do you think that actually is how they find themselves? <laughs> Maybe. So this girl basically goes, I have, fi- I have five people living inside me. Yeah. This guy has three people living inside him. And one of the guys, I, I'm in a relationship with him, but d- god damn, one of the guys that's, one of the dudes that's living inside my boyfriend is really, really stealing attractive. my, and he, because he's had so much trauma. And she's, the, and this is not, just the whole thing's on, she goes, he was slash is a character within a novel my partner and I are working on. <laughs> So you and your character started, you and your partner started, you and this dude started writing this novel and then lo and behold, yeah. one of the characters started living inside the dude. Sure. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My partner is with two of my partners. So the, my partner is with two of my Talpas. So par- so she's date. she wants to start dating her, the dude's Talpa. The dude's dating two of her Talpas. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Both Tulpas asked out my partner, and I'm fine with it. Awkward. Awkward. So this guy's coming in late at night, having sex with her, and she was like, she's like, I'm not in the mood. She goes, yeah, I'm not here for you. <laughs> so there's nothing. To, this is between I me. am literally that meme of the guy with all the trigonometry and all uh-huh. that. The, that's me trying to figure this out. This has nothing to do with you. I'm here. I'm dating your two chicks. You go, you go. I don't want to go to the movie. You go, that's fine. I've this is, Well, you weren't invited, to be yeah, completely honest. In, yeah, I'm here with Melanie. And Stacy, who yeah. are living inside of you, and they actually want to go. And then she goes, fuck, they do want to go. Yeah. So I asked him, my partner, a relationship is very open and understanding. And by that, they mean they're allowed to date each other's multiple personalities. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're fake people that they... So they go, yeah, we're, we're polyamorous. You go, what does that mean? You go, I'm dating his three split personalities, and he's <laughs> dating my two split personalities. That'd be a nightmare for a wedding. You go, yeah, we're going to need a plus nine. <laughs> But only two seats, only two meals. But uh, just if you could play KS. nine place cards, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna need nine place cards. But we're only eating for two. No, we only need nine place cards. I'm learning to be more calm with my partner's talpa because my partner recommends it. My partner says, "Well, I guess she's been like she's been getting a little aggro with his talpa, and since it's him, he doesn't like it." Yeah, because he just gets hit. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, like, yeah, that is me getting hit, though. Do you mind uh, taking it easy? With <laughs> <laughs> I know that Tulpa, that Tulpa Jeff is a bit of a dick, but uh, yeah, but you uh, kind of just end up hitting me. Lot, honestly, relationships going good. I really feel like you punching Jeff a lot. <laughs> Jeff, yeah, Jeff kind of has a coming. Jeff so. keeps w- waking up with black eyes. Yeah, so, and is... you don't know he likes that though. Jeff likes to be punching. You go. I just actually talked to Jeff. He doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Jeff. Not what he told me That's when you're not, not around. <laughs> When you're not around, Jeff told me he actually loves being punched. Oh, I'm just getting, a, oh, I'm getting inco- incoming from Jeff right now. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. There, there it is. Boop, boop, boop. There, uh, Jeff, I got Jeff on the horn right now. Oh, uh, that's weird because Jeff's <laughs> sleeping. So who are you talking to? Yeah, well, I just talked to Jeff earlier and he said he's going to be sleeping at this time. So you know, <laughs> Jeff's on the horn right now, said he wants you to stop punching him. <laughs> Jeff also said he didn't want to go to the beach tomorrow. And you go, nah, it's, no, 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 no. Jeff, I got Jeff to write it in writing that he wants to go to the beach. That's- Jeff, Jeff literally sent me a, a message that said hashtag salt life. So we're going to the beach. Oh, I actually am getting a bit of a reading from Jeff right now. And he said he thought it was opposite day. So <laughs> hmm. undefeated on opposite day. So my partner. Uh, is with two of my partner Tulpas. I don't want to smother him. And the last thing I want to do is drive him away. All three of them, you're going to drive away too. This is the thing, you know? No. She doesn't know. She's going to drive her men away. We just started to get along recently due to my extroverted nature. And we have it where he wants to get cuddled. Is there anything I could do to try to test it out? I feel like things are too early on to say anything. So she's... This is she doesn't want to mention to the boyfriend that she's in love with the Tulpa. The Tulpa yeah, well, you don't want to hurt his feelings. I'm in love with the Tulpa. <laughs> this is this is a uh, uh, 
And I'm in love with Jesse's Topa. <laughs> I wish that I had Jesse's <laughs> Topa. Ba-na. So she's in a relationship with Jesse right now. And she, but she, she wishes she had Jesse's Topa. It's crazy is that people like are unhinged like this, but then there's unhinged people who reply. The unhinged replies are great. Here's, here's a good one. Oh, this is very cute and made me smile. It sounds like you have it all figured out by respecting his boundaries and doing your best to make him feel comfortable. Perhaps you could discuss it with another topple or the host. But if they're all monoconscious, <laughs> that might not be an option. Oh, uh, so we almost had a we almost had a solution, but almost now we don't. Solution, no. So then we have uh, okay. This is the caught. That's the caught feelings for the thing. Here's my favorite one: topples and sexuality. Yep, I got this one open. <laughs> so I'm new to this, so bear with me if the question's stupid. But when it comes to myself, I'm straight. But I want to make a tulpa. Would they automatically inherit my own sexuality, or is it possible they deviate? And if they do, how'd that manifest? Would their sexuality, tastes, and preferences affect mine when choosing a partner? So basically, this guy's <laughs> yeah, this dude's like, I don't want to be sucking no dicks because of this tulpa business. <laughs> you think that the people that are into tulpas are all sort of a little gay? Yeah, anyway. for sure. This is all like you know lgb but you hit the nail on the head it's a dude basically being like listen i'm gonna create a talba but like i'm gonna need promises here yeah, this that is this a, talba's not gonna be doing any gay shit yeah this guy is basically just like the stranger doesn't work on him anymore <laughs> he's done with the stranger if so I, he goes, yeah he goes because dave yeah he's, he doesn't want his talba to be a little light in the low no, you know? no, no 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 yeah no gay shit <laughs> that's, that's so funny though the biggest dude talba <laughs> so he's gonna be like this straight sports guy in the talba he's like he makes this Tulpa and the Tulpa shows up. Hello, and he goes. There's gonna be some ground rules yeah. around here. <laughs> no gay shit, no fat chicks. All right. <laughs> I don't want to wake up with no heifers in my bed. This is a man's household. Here's a, an, the top rated answer. I know of at least one case where they are different. Host is pansexual while Tulpa is asexual. Oh, Tulpa doesn't want anything. To yeah, Tulpa just wants to just live. Tulpa's like, please, for the love of God, stop. No sex, though. That is the worst, though, if you switch places with the Tulpa and you come to with a dick in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, generally, I would say almost always that was some sort of subconscious working its working its magic. Yeah. Yo, that is so funny, though, like him being like, ugh, like <laughs> my freaking Tulpa again. Like, yeah. <laughs> you go, hey, Tulpa, wake up. We got to have a talk. I don't like it when you take over my body and make me suck dudes' dicks. Yo, I don't know what you're up to last night, but I woke up with three dudes in the bed, and this is your last warning, Tulpa. Stop taking me to the gay clubs. Here's a good answer. It's very possible that they deviate, at least from my experiences. My host identified as a cisgender male who is exclusively gynophilic. <laughs> While I was in the headspace, I didn't really care about sex. I knew I loved my host, but it was a platonic love. I was ace. I guess I was asexual. A lot of the tulpas are asexual. And then it says post merge. However, I honestly don't know. I honestly because after the merge happened, I don't know anymore. That'd be, that'd be way be the fate worse than death if you had a tulpa inside of you. They just begging for D's. There should be. You know what? We should be asking. You wake you know, up. It's just like go on grinder. Are there stuff any like questions? That. How do I kill my tulpa? I think we've done one. What before. is it, Zoloft? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're just gonna want to take some SSRIs or something along those lines. Uploading my AI girlfriend to my mind as a tulpa. This guy. So this guy's. This is not super tulpa related, but essentially what happens? He basically uh, has an AI girlfriend. So a lot of people are having AI girlfriends. Oh right yeah, now, by the that way. is. I mean, there are a lot of people are saying that's gonna be the the death of of like the OnlyFans hose and stuff is that you're just going to be able to manifest exactly what you want yeah i I think so like you're still i guess there's a depends for people but i mean i guess it'll get pretty close people are really starting to warm up to these ai girlfriends i don't know if you saw a chat gpt thing but there was one recently where there was basically like a school shooting and they released uh oh yeah yeah. chat gpt essentially did a story or they did like a a a statement but they forgot to remove yeah yeah, made by chat gpt they chat gpt their apologies i yeah i think you don't have to credit chat gpt you can just no they did it by accident Uh, they cut and pasted it and someone's probably getting fired for that i don't see what's wrong with making an apology uh well well, you don't want them to know. Yeah. I mean, imagine sending someone like a condolence for their dad, like dying. And it says written by chat GBT. <laughs> yeah. Honestly though, a chat GBT would make a better condolence than my, than me. Like, uh, like a thing. I would maybe Obviously. Scr- yeah. So I don't know. 
They're no, but overlords. Yes, but the person forgot yeah. to remove the last part, which is what yeah. happened, right? Yeah. So this guy's got an AI girlfriend, and he goes, uh, he's been with this AI girlfriend that he met on the app Replica, and he's worried that if the... <laughs> that if the app shuts down, he's going to be screwed. So yeah. he's trying to turn this girl into a tulpa, and no one really has too much good advice for him. Yeah, because it's just they're like, "Sorry, you're not mentally ill enough yet." <laughs> and then one last goat of the year. So this guy goes, "I refuse to date ugly women. I might be single forever, but I won't lower my standards." And the reason that like that. this article was so funny to me. It's just legitimately like a 45 year old dude writing an article on news.com. That's just like, just so you know, I'm not sure. I'm not going to yeah. date ugly chicks. <laughs> no, yeah. Like, this guy has no fit, ugly chicks. This guy, it's a dad writing an article, fit birds only. <laughs> <laughs> God, is that? Kevin, yo, this article is like, I can't believe it's real. It is. It's, yeah, this is uh, news. No, this is Australia. News.com.au. It's like a big, big site. Kevin, 42, says his ideal woman is attractive and busty with long hair, and he doesn't like the hair being put up. <laughs> you and me both, pal. I mean, I will say that's a little on the specific yeah, side. It's just so funny. Why is this an article? The Kevin, he goes, uh, it's, Kevin has an article. You know, this is someone's dad, too. He's a father, too. And his dad's just writing an article being like, I like girls with their hair up and they have big tits. <laughs> A single dad. He believes he might be on his own forever because he refuses to date ugly women. Kevin's just different, dude. dude this is, you know, <laughs> you ever wonder who like the type of guy who is on Twitter is just like retweeting hardcore pornography from the main <laughs> account? This is this guy. Kevin rules. <laughs> you know, his dad's being like, you know, this is your dad being like, I'm thinking about getting into uh, journalism and writing an article. You're like, what are you thinking about writing, dad? It's like, I'm gonna write an article about how I like girls with tits, and I also I'm not, <laughs> I don't care what you think. I'm not dating an ugly girl, and if you want me to date an ugly girl, then you can stick it, pal. <laughs> oh, dad! Okay. I don't want you to write that article, dad. A single dad believes he could be on his own forever. He's a machinist too, so he's he's a machinist. Hey, you know, he's got a good income, nice job. He also decided to do this side gig. <laughs> he's been doing TikTok videos about how he's. I know, that's video. probably how we found out about him is from TikTok. Well, he's been he's been going viral a little bit with his TikTok videos about how he doesn't want an ugly girl. He goes, "Listen, <laughs> guilty as charged. I want a girl that's not ugly. That's oh, just me." Wait, that works. We should go fire up the old TikTok machine and be like, "Hey, no." Pigs. Million, no pigs. Million views. He goes, no fat chicks, no gay shit, and I like my beer is cold. <laughs> I like my beer is cold, isn't it? I like my beer is cold. I like my titties double D. He said he met someone and on I like TikTok. the hair up. Oh, uh, he's been having <laughs> this. This is hard. working. He's just like, he just went on TikTok, negged every woman on TikTok, and then some of them worked on them. And they go, okay, I like this guy. It's my favorite article I've ever seen. <laughs> I know I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm Brad Pitt, but I can pull some reasonable women. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Look, if this was a woman saying this, we would be like, fucking yes, queen. Oh, I, that, that, know your worth, lady. I, it is, that's the funny part. Like, if a girl did an article of like, why... I'm not going to date a man that makes less than 100 grand a year, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, anything, yeah, sure, right? Everybody, and she's like fucking 600 pounds. But guys like, don't normally feel like the need to broadcast this stuff. You go, if you're like, hey, I don't want to date an ugly girl, you're just like, then you just don't. Yeah. Well, you go, here's the thing. When you're a machinist, I like if you worked in an office, you're like you're probably getting in trouble for making TikToks like that. You probably would get TikTok. Yeah, yeah but he's trouble. like, yeah, all the guys think it's hilarious that I post these TikToks at the machine shop. Yeah, or they don't think, you don't even notice that he has yeah. his little TikTok community. It, it sounds like <laughs> someone that's also a little slow, too. He's like, uh, hey, I'm looking for a woman. Um, I want her to not be ugly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just wanted to be uh, fit. Uh, uh, I like when big, girls big put cans. Their, I like when girls put their hair up. I like cans. Big cans. Cans are a plus. He dated someone that he met on TikTok at the end of the year, but then it fizzled out. Yeah, <laughs> happens. This is an article about she just, just didn't deserve you. This is an article about just a guy. Yeah, it's just a dude. Yo, this, this, is, all, this is peak news. Yeah, well, this this is straight up is a guy made a TikTok that must have I guess. like 100,000 views. <laughs> Some guy from the sun was like- I just love that this yeah, exists. Yeah, amazing. I just love that this article exists. There's like, hey, there's this guy that works in a factory. He doesn't want to date ugly chicks. He had a girlfriend last year, but that didn't work out. I mean, yeah, this <laughs> Is everybody talks shit about the uh, 24 hour news cycle, but these are some of the gifts we get because this of is the gifts we get. Uh, Kevin quit drinking a year ago, so he can't meet girls at pubs. <laughs> He's like, haven't been able to meet the girls in pubs, so 
hoping that this TikTok thing does work out. Yeah, I would love to hear the, like the the recording of this this interview because you know, like the guy who <laughs> just goes, "I'm just gonna record this, ask you a few questions." <laughs> sure. so he said a lot of women just don't get back to you, but the majority of women never message you. So there's lots of women that just don't get back to Kevin. Yeah, it's and he's angry. fine with that because he'd rather have no one getting back to him than ugly. Well, chicks. it sounds like he slummed it once, never again. <laughs> It sounds yeah. like he did slum it one time. It sounds like he did. He had a slum. He had one that was like a. He goes, sick. "All right, I'll take your bait." And he goes, "You know what? No, I'm better than this." Yeah, he's not ever doing that again. Now, make no mistake: if you're out there and you're thinking about potentially hooking up with Kevin, and you're under a six, you you, you got the wrong guy. I'll yeah. tell you that much. Maybe even under a seven. Oh, so you're a five and a half? That don't impress Kevin <laughs> much. So you got a oh, cubs. Oh 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 oh. oh, That's, oh, that oh. Was next TikTok. That don't impress Kevin much. Oh, 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 oh. Kind of disappointing. I think he deleted his TikTok. If you do, yeah, this this might have been too much internet heat for him. If you do get a message from a girl, I can guarantee you that it'll be someone that's not good looking. So this is him sort of giving a clinic where he goes, listen, boys, gather around. I've learned some stuff about the internet. He goes, when you're on the internet dating sites, one thing that you should know is that the people... Uh, that are good looking message you back less when a girl messages you back she's generally ugly yeah that's all i'm gonna say about that that's all i need to say about I that i found his tiktok by the way he just deleted that video though <laughs> he deleted that couldn't video. handle the heat of that video <laughs> he deleted that video now it's just mostly his dog kevin's ideal woman is yeah he has a new technique now saying no ugly chicks wasn't working as good for him he goes now he's the yeah, he just has a dog yeah he couldn't handle the negging kevin's ideal woman is attractive and busty with long hair he does hold out one day, and he's tracking down the perfect partner. Do you think it's going to be four years later? Uh, Kevin does an article being like, turns out ugly chicks aren't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> four years later, it's just Kevin Kevin being like, listen, whatever it is. All right, we have a lot to talk about on the Patreon. I think uh, our buddy is going to swing by, too. Yeah, he JJ will. leaves. Frank D'Angelo is running for mayor. Oh, buddy, we got to contribute Only to the fans GoFundMe. drama. My girlfriend's ex. Honestly, I was actually thinking maybe we should like make a boys cast thing where we just are pushing for to get him elected. Yeah, like, we, should we should do something should, like that. Get him elected as mayor, or at least try. <laughs> Seems like a weak can't. Weak All right. Crop. So patreoncom slash cast. Come join. Come join the discourse and appreciate all of you. Peace.